Good morning, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause for waking up this early. So I'm going to try to be as brief as I can and tell my story in about seven minutes. So I was born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas. I came from a broken home. Yeah, y'all can give Texas a round of applause. I came from a broken home. Mom and dad was split up. My grandmother had my mother when she was 12 years old. I got arrested at eight years old for smoking marijuana. So I had a, a really hard fight as a young man. And my parents and my family fought for everything that they have today to make sure I was successful. I went to an all-black high school. The school had, had its ups and downs. There was plenty of times where people were doing drugs and selling drugs at school, fights and pulling guns on each other. But the school offered me an opportunity to play football. In high school, I became an All-American football player, and it really revolutionized my life because it gave me an opportunity to change environments. Growing up in an all-black community, it was different. I was raised that I was a Democrat, to think one way. I was raised that white people didn't really like us and that there was a huge conflict. And God gave me the opportunity to go to college. And at the University of Arizona, I saw that there was something different, that people didn't have the animosity that was told to me growing up. And while I was in college, another wonderful thing happened to me because football wasn't working out. That was my dream, my passion. It wasn't working out. And I had to make a decision. I had to decide, and, and in my mind, I was going to rule out God. And so I had to make a decision, was God real? I went to church. God had given me visions and dreams, and I ended up getting saved. I was baptized, and I was filled with God's Spirit. And I believe that that was God's way of further delivering me and putting me on the proper path, because now I didn't see people as black and white and wherever background you came from. I saw every single person that I dealt with as God's children, and that's very important. And so again, football wasn't working out. I was in the 2010 NFL draft. I did not get drafted. I was heartbroken. But I believe God had a mission for me. I had to get a job. I had a young son at the time. I applied for everything in the city of Tucson. Anybody from Tucson, Arizona in here? Well, we got some Arizonans in here. So I applied for everything in the city of Tucson, and, and, and surprisingly enough, the police department called me back. <laughs> I, I, I would never forget that phone call. I, was, I, I had argued with a friend the night before, and then I answered the phone, and they say, it's the Tucson Police Department. And I'm like, hey, they're going to they take me to jail? But it was an opportunity, and I said yes. For the first time in my life, I saw a hero. And Sean Payne, I did a ride along with Sean Payne because I had to figure out what am I gonna do now that I have an opportunity to be a police officer. I fell in love with the job. I saw how courageous that officer was. I saw how he served his community day in and day out. And I said to myself, I have to be a part of that. And while I was a police officer, I was still a Democrat. All of my friends, probably every police officer that I work with, would question me on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't understand, Brandon, why are you a Democrat? Why do you support the Democratic Party when you are Christian and, you are, and all of your values seem to be contradictory to what the Democrats are offering? And I used to always tell them, no, nah, don't worry about it, you know, I, I still like them. I don't agree with everything, but I'm a Democrat because that's how I was raised. But slowly but surely, thank you to Mr. Barack Obama, he revealed the true colors of the Democratic Party. And I saw him methodically go through and talk trash, negative rhetoric against law enforcement in America. And I saw, as a police officer, people challenge us, try to hurt us, and destroy our reputation because of what 
Barack Obama did. And I made up in my mind, I made up in my mind that I would never support anybody who does not have the respect for the men and women who serve this country. All right, let me, let me finish, because I'm running out of time. And so I decided that I had to give, give myself an opportunity as a fair, grown man to look on the other side. I decided to look on the Republican Party side. And I love Ben Carson. Anybody a Ben Carson fan? But I, I hope Ben Carson is not listening to me today. He may be mad at what I'm about to say, but Ben Carson just didn't have the juice. And I was hoping he was going to get it together and, 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 and be victorious, but he dropped out and then he endorsed President Trump. And I was shocked. I thought President Trump was playing around. Big time boss, billionaire, he was going to show these politicians that they're worth nothing and then he's going to walk away. But he didn't. He hung in there. I went to a Trump rally in Tucson, Arizona, and it blew my mind. And for those of you who know who I am, I made a video about it and it went viral. And from that point on, I saw what the media did. I saw how these liberal protesters were acting foolish and crazy. And I said, for the rest of my life, I'm going to decide today that I will honor this country and I will serve the principles of God and what I think this country should be. And I feel like that Donald Trump is the person, is the leader that's going to take this country back to its original state of success, prosperity, and love, and unity. And, and I'll finish with this. I'll finish with this. We're in a fight. We're built the fight. We've always been warriors. We win wars. And I'll tell you this. I want everybody in here to remember this. No matter what happened, God has a set up that in the end of all of this, we will win. In the end, we will win. God bless you and thank you.